Is it possible for gay men over 50 to still feel sexual and have fulfilling and healthy sex lives? Damn straight it is. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the podcast where we talk about all the things that are important to men like us, gay men over 50, and today we're going to talk about our relationship with our own sexuality. Hello, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And if you are watching us on YouTube, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, and hit that little bell so every time we have a new episode, you get notified. Ding, ding. And we are about to jump into this whole sex thing, but the uh, sex and sexuality is a, can be very uncomfortable for people to talk about. I know I definitely am very uncomfortable to talk about sex, but sexuality is a completely different thing. How do you feel, Michael? I completely agree with you in regard to the talking about sex. But talking about our sexuality, I think, is hugely important. And I actually read a number of articles where it encouraged men our age to have conversations about sexuality and issues that you may have. Um, and not necessarily get into the nitty gritty details, but you know, to, to talk about sexuality is hugely important in life. Definitely. I think we have to start, though, you know, really break it down. Sex is about the act. It's a very private thing. But sexuality is a part of who we are innately. It's part of our personality. It's part of our, our whole being, which is something that we share with everybody. And so many men um, over the age of 50, gay men, kind of disregard that. They think like, oh, I'm, I'm over 50 now. Nobody wants me. Nobody cares about me. My husband's too old. He doesn't, he's not even going to look at me. And so they push that part away from them. But sexuality is, as you said, so incredibly important. Um, why do you feel it's such an important thing? I, I feel it validates us as human beings and affords us an opportunity to have physical and emotional contact with someone else. Right. So I, I think, especially as we get older, the, the latter part of that, the emotional or, you know, as we get older, sometimes things don't work as well as they should. Um, yeah. But the intimacy aspect of our sexuality is something that as we get older, I think it's more important to explore. Definitely. I mean, you're right. As we're aging, as we're getting into our 70s and 80s and hopefully into our 90s, our sex lives may diminish depending on what's happening with our bodies and medications we're taking, whatever. But that doesn't mean that our sexuality diminishes. But we as humans need to nurture it and, you know, make sure that it's changing with us and changing with who we are as our lives are changing as well. Um, and sexuality is so much more than taking out our penis and playing around, you know? It's about, as you said, a very important part of that is intimacy. It's about how we look at ourselves um, in the confidence in who we are. Not, not about, yeah, I'm great in bed, but... You know, I'm, I'm confident in who I am as a human being. How, how incredibly sexy is that? Right. You know, there's, there is nothing more um, to me. There's nothing more sexy than a confident person. Oh, definitely. not arrogant because there's a big difference, but confident. Right. There is a humongous difference between being confident and being cocky. And I mean that in the double entendre there that, yes, you know, your dick, the size of your dick, whatever who gives a shit? But if you are a confident man in who he is and, you know, also is in confident, he is confident with the people around him. He, he shows and brings that confidence out of other people. That is an incredibly sexy thing um, to experience, definitely. What are, what are some other ways that we can express our sexuality besides this sex act? Um, you know, holding hands. Being affectionate. If you go to the movie theater, I, I love like cuddling with somebody in a movie theater. Yeah. You know? And the, to me, that confirms, doesn't confirm, but it, it, it strengthens my relationship to my sexuality, where there's nothing to do with the physical act of sex, 
but there's intimacy. And oh. things like that make me feel more confident about who I am and my sexuality. Right. So besides the whole intimate part, there's also those parts where we're not even near the other person, that kind of subtle flirting, uh, just sex seduction, uh, the way that you look at somebody, the way you give them a wink, uh, you know, not in a, not in a, hey, let's go to bed, but just, hey, you know. Um, yeah, like if you're at a party with your, you know, your husband or somebody you're dating and you just sort of make eye contact across the room. Right. And there's that, like you said, a flirty, but, you know, you, that's some magic. Totally. in those moments. I, I love those moments where you're at a party, my husband's across the room. I can say a million things to him, you know, like, save me, get me out of here, don't eat that. Why are you talking to that person? <laughs> but also give him those little like, hey, you look, you look hot. You're, right? You know, the, the little things that we have to do. But another real important part of uh, human sexuality is vulnerability, being able oh. to be vulnerable in whatever situation you're with. Sex is, a, yes, it's a totally different thing, but to be with, connected to somebody and to be able to open yourself and be vulnerable and to trust that other person, I, that's a very sexual thing. Absolutely. You know? Because there have been situations that I've been in where the other person may not be able to perform to the level that they want to, but... You know, to reassure somebody that that's not what that moment's about is, I think, hugely important for both people. And that, like you said, it creates intimacy. Right. Um, which is such a huge portion of our relationship to our own sexuality. Exactly. And a very important thing to remember, though, especially for those of us aging, is that we aren't who we used to be when we were 20. We aren't the guy that we were at 30 or even 40. And s there are a number of men uh, out there who are clutching onto that and trying to be that sexual being that they were and to interact with other people in that sexuality. Whereas, as opposed to you know, letting their sexuality age with them. Because right. as I said earlier, that changes, you know, who we are changes. And we are never going to be able to win the competition with our younger selves, ever. No. We are never going to be able to win a competition with any other younger gay male out there. It's just not going to happen, right? But we can be as confident in who we are, in our own sexuality. Uh, and that, as you said, is just the most, like, sensual, sexy thing that, you know, really draws attention and attraction to us. Yeah. And as, as we get older, I think it is important because let's be real, you know, in our teens and our twenties, we are walking around with perpetual hard-ons. Um, so sex is probably in the forefront of our minds, whereas we get older, that's not the case. And to develop a healthy relationship to our sexuality and other aspects of that, I think is hugely important and to have that realization of, oh, things are changing, but you know what? That's okay. Right. Oh, totally. I mean, that's, that's a battle that we are all, you know, at war with that life is constantly changing. We are constantly changing. Our bodies are constantly changing. I think just one of my left side just dropped another <laughs> five inches, but it's, you know, we'd have to be okay with that. And like I said, we can't compete with who we were. We just have to always be moving forward and looking, you know, forward. And some someone told me this in my 20s. Uh, it was a friend's mother. And she said, the way you are today, the way you look today, that's as good as it gets. Because <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow and the next day after that, you're going to wish you were this guy. I mean, how many times have you looked at pictures of yourself from like five years and 10 years ago? And you're like, damn, I look so good. But at the time, you were like, oh, my God, I, I'm so fat, or I'm so not this and so not that. We just have to accept who we are, you Absolutely. know. It's, and embrace it. Embrace, you know, like we're all on that train, just different cars. And if you don't embrace right. where you are in this moment, you, you don't get to enjoy the ride. 
Right, exactly. And that it, embrace everything about yourself, including your sexuality. Um, it does make me really sad to see those men our age and older who are like, yeah, nah, it's over. That part, part of my life is over. And it's like, why? Yeah, why I just is- had dinner with a friend who said that exact thing. Really? I, I don't even want to have sex with other people anymore. And I'm like, but why? It's like, I have my dog. Yeah. I watch TV and that's okay. I'm like, but no, it's not. Well, what about, okay, so yeah, he's saying like, no, I don't want to have sex with anyone else. But what about just being sexu- a sexual being? Does he still no, he doesn't. That? He doesn't want to have anything to do with wow. another human being on that level, even just in regard to intimacy. And it's a little, it made me, it made me sad because I actually hadn't seen this friend in probably 20 years. Wow. Um, and oddly enough, we're on... I was on one of the apps here and I get a message, um, Mr. Michael Foley. And I'm like, who is this? <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was nice to connect with him, but it made me a little sad that that was his perspective now on his life. And he's actually a little bit younger than me. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get it. Like I, I've said to you a million times, I, I don't know if I could be out there dating and getting naked in front of other people at this, you know, I've just been with my husband for so long and we're just so comfortable with each other. So I get that, but, but to, to lose the entirety of your sexuality to, I mean, isn't one of the greatest things out there, even though I, you know, I do this with my husband, but that like subtle flirting that, you know, just little smile to somebody, you know, the interesting thing with him, because again, we talked it out, um, it, what, it didn't have to do with sex. Right. It had yeah. to do with the callus that had built up and his lack of want to open up to somebody again. Is, do you think it's a, a lot of that is just fear of rejection, fear of... I think it's fear of being hurt. Yeah. Well. And the older we get, that seems to be magnified because you know, so much of who we are, especially if you're a single gay man is attached to not being rejected. Or if you come on to somebody and they're not interested, it's, it's a different level than it was than when you were in your 20s. Because you're just like, oh, okay, I'm moving on. When you get older, you're like, oh, it's because I'm old. It's because I'm unattractive. Um, and I think that that dings up the body as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I totally can get that as well. But I just, I feel like we have to separate the sex act from our sexual beings, you know, that to be able to walk in a room and just kind of, you know, have people know your, feel your presence. That's a sexuality. You Absolutely. Know? I, mean, I how- think for a lot of gay men, that might be a big challenge because so much of our socialization is through sex and not necessarily sexuality. And as a single gay man, um, I can say that with a good amount of competence. I think, you know, I think the difference is uh, I don't because I, I have this husband. We're, right. we're in a committed relationship. So I am not out there looking for sex. Um, I am not looking for people to, um, I don't know, accept me as a, you know, the sex partner. But I, I definitely want to feel some sort of a sexuality about me that I'm not, you know, Ken just walked in, you know, like right. this little plastic thing with no sexuality. Uh, and this is really funny. Uh, so just speaking of that, like, I'm not out there looking for someone to look at me and go like, hey, let's go get it on. Um, but I mean, in my youth, that happened all the time. Not that I played on it, but um, there was a time where all of a sudden it kind of just dropped away. It wasn't a constant thing anytime. And I remember I'm in LA, I'm driving along and I get up to a stop sign or stoplight and a car pulls up next to me. And you know, when someone is like staring at you, yeah. right? You feel that. And I'm like, Hey, I must be looking great today. Like, Oh, like, and I turn over and it's this man, like barely above the steering wheel, probably 120 years old, probably my age at this moment. But I was just like, oh, okay, well, I got a new audience, you know, right? uh, let's as just move on. As long as somebody acknowledges that's you, I'm the thing. always grateful, you know. It's so a- am I, right? And I think that's what we have to do at this age is be like, okay, and, and like your friend, like, yeah, okay, maybe the 
25 year old isn't going to be jumping all over you. But what about someone your own age? Or what about that guy who's a few years older than you or even more than, you know, is that an issue that your friend is having that they're really, they were focused on the younger gay male? Oh, without a doubt. Well, so that's... yeah, so much, so, so much of his being was tied to how many people like the bag. Like if I was on vacation, um, that right. that's what it was. And I've had, you know, I talked about one a, a few weeks ago on the show. Um, I always wound up finding romances on a, a on vacations. Like I would meet somebody and then you'd spend the whole time with them. It didn't necessarily matter to me like how many guys I've had on vacation. Um, because there was something romantic about that that had nothing to do with sex. You right. know, you're on vacation and you're in Provincetown and you get to take these long walks on the beach or, you know, um, sit on the shore of the bay at night and just like cuddle or hold each other laying on a blanket. Um, yeah, to me, that's the best part of my sexuality for me. Yeah, and for me as well. Um, I've... I am very happily married, but my husband and I, we have those moments, those moments where we are walking together and we sit and cuddle somewhere and look at the stars. And, you know, that is a huge part of our sexuality as well. Um, so back to your friend, though. So he's given up on life, but but is that because he's he's not going to look forward. He's not willing to have relationships or, you know, be sexual with men his own age or older. The ironic thing that I pointed out to him, yeah. cause when he's telling me this, I'm like, mm, one and one is not adding up to two because you texted me on an app. Right. <laughs> so you're on there for something. So, right. I kind of have to believe that he was maybe just paying a little bit of lip service to, okay. to protect himself. Yeah. You know, um, cause it's easier to project a sort of callous hardened image of yourself cause it makes you appear to be less vulnerable and able to be hurt again. Right. Um, I have a tendency to do that, um, myself. So, I can totally relate to that. But I, again, I had to remind him, um, dude, you, um, you hit me up on Grindr. <laughs> so you're definitely looking for something. You know, uh, just an aside here, last, on our last show, I learned the woof on Scruff. And I have been saying that to myself over and over in my head. I just got a woof on Scruff. <laughs> I don't know why. I just think it's fantastic. But... That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. No, and actually, he's even texted me that a number of times. Is really? that a woof on Scruff? No, oh, that's you. funny. Yeah. You. Yeah. You oh, said, yeah. You sent me that yesterday in an email. Is that a woof on Scruff? And yeah, I said, I no, just, it's, a, it's a flame on Grinder. You are <laughs> teaching me so much. Um, I just wish some of my stuff would rub off on you. Uh, you know, we need to get you the right husband out there. Uh, it would be lovely. I mean, it would be yeah. a lovely thing, but I'm... Again, I'm I'm waiting for the right man, and if he doesn't come along, I'm okay with that. I don't want to be in a relationship just to be in a relationship. Yeah, which is great. Um, I do want all the bells and whistles still. And if that's a pie-in-the-sky sort of mentality, then that's okay. I can live with it. But I, I want romance. I want I want all that stuff. Well, all of romance and all of that stuff is exactly that. That's part of our sexuality, Absolutely. sensuality, romance, vulnerability. That's all part of who someone is as a sexual being, not about the sex act. So, yeah, you've got to find the right guy who also believes in that. Unfortunately, in a lot of the reading that I did about sexuality with gay men over 50, a lot that I read was a little bit about, you know, what we were just discussing with your friend, that so many men are clutching on to being who they were at 20 and feel that who they were sexually then is the person that they need to be presenting out now. And instead of embracing, as we said, who we are today and the difference who we are. 
life is fluid. It's constantly changing as we are, as our bodies are, as our minds are. And we have to remember that and bring all the different parts along with us, including our sen- sexuality. Um, and I think for a lot of people, like with him, <clears throat> there's a fear involved because you do get calloused. And just referring to yourself as a sexual being as we get older seems to be easier than all the other stuff that goes along with young romance. You know, again, romance and and just intimacy and all that other stuff that as we get older, you become more callous and it's like, I'm just going to have sex and that's going to be it. I'm not not opening the door for anything else at this point because I've been hurt enough. And I think that's where he was coming from. Yeah, that's that's making me really sad. To yeah, think it made that. me sad too. Because again, you know, I may be, you know, I could be alone until the day I drop. I'm I'm okay with that, but I want that Disney moment still. I want that romance. I just do. I want to, you know, I want to be Belle and Beast swirling around on the dance floor and feel that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you, Belle, or are you the Beast? You know what? It depends on the day. Okay. I got depends you. on the day. Oh, I, am, I, am, I am very willing to be fluid in that regard, but boy, does it depend on the day. I totally understand. <laughs> As a gay wanna, man over 50, yeah. So, yep. Sometimes I want to run out on that hilltop and sing at the top of my lungs, and other times I'm beast sitting in a corner hating people. So, right. You know. Cool. All right. Well, I, I'm a little confused by, the, by these two dichotomies that you're, right? That doesn't even make sense. But these the two angles that you're coming from, because you said at one point, sometimes I just want it to be about sex and be over with. But then you also want the romance part. And you were saying, um, you know, that some men who are afraid of being... Intimacy. Yeah, of the intimacy and just want to get into the sex. But as we're aging, the sex part is going to get harder and harder to do. You know, Um, I mean... just kind of what happens to the male body, especially if you're in your 70s, 80s, and 90s, that sex act has to become not as important as it was. And to now, where we are now, we should, as your friend, should be kind of learning how to bring those aspects of us out, the intimacy, the vulnerability, the romance, to find that. Although I think the introduction of Viagra into our psyche has brought it back to, oh, I can just have sex now. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, there are always going to be those guys that it's just about sex and that's all they want to do. Um, you know, we all know those guys that just go out and have sex and that's their life. Great. Um, but other people like the other people like you, um, who do want more than that have to kind of just feed this sexuality of yours and, and, nurture it and and bring it into this new face of life that we're we're going into unfortunately yeah and don't get me wrong because i do embody that other aspect of it too where sometimes it's like i'm just gonna have sex i don't even want to talk to anybody because it's work um so yeah it's it's a very challenging tightrope to walk yeah um to sort of be on both sides of that. But I'm, I'm able to embrace both sides of that. Wow. Which I still think, because again, I can sit here and say, I want romance and not feel ashamed about it and know that it's a huge part of who I am and what my sexuality and what it is I need. Um, and I think there are a lot of guys out there who would be afraid to say that. I know, I know a lot of them who would really? say, I want romance. I, I want... I want to be wooed, you know? Um, Yeah, there are a lot of guys our age who are single who, again, have put up those walls, and I I don't think they want to appear vulnerable to somebody else. Oh, that's too bad, you know? I mean, what is it? Why? Why are we afraid to be vulnerable in front of people? And again, I, I I inhabit both of those worlds. So I, for me, there is a a little bit of a callousness that is formed on the heart where it's like you don't want to open yourself up again and you don't want to be hurt. Yeah. So I can absolutely 100% relate to that aspect of the gay male sexuality as we get older. Okay. I mean, I, 
I guess as in with everything in life, it's all about choices and you have to choose. Do you want to keep putting yourself out there and maybe get hurt? Or do you want to shut that part of you down? And I just find it kind of sad for people that don't, uh, who, who want to shut down. And I, you're missing out on a whole, whole lot of stuff. And I'm not talking just about sex. In fact, I don't know how you do it. You and other guys just go out and have sex. I never was that guy. I don't know how to do that. I've mentioned this a number of times. If someone wanted a piece of this when I was young, they worked a very long time until they got it. I never I never had sex with someone I didn't know, that someone, you know, that I didn't know for a while. So that to me is just like, wow, I don't know how to do that. So Again, well, again, um, we, we, we led very different lives yeah. where you came out a little bit later in the 80s and then you met your husband and you were in that. When I came out, <clears throat> there was a kid in the candy store mentality. Yeah. You know, it was like, woo! And you just <laughs> went nuts because, you know, I spent 18 years of my life not knowing anybody else in the community. Right. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I get to experience this whole side of myself that I never acknowledged um, right. regarding my sexuality. And so there was, I was the bull in the China shop and the kid in the candy store. And I mean, I, I, it wasn't like I, the first guy I had sex with was my husband. I had plenty of, you know, experiences. Right. But, but you it, just, you just wandered a little bit. I just didn't of history before you did. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's also because I was not completely out of the closet and and the work that I was doing, I had to develop this whole sexuality thing um, without the sex act. So I separated them at the very beginning of my sexuality as a right. human being. Um, so maybe... Yeah, maybe my that... closet door blew off the hinges. <laughs> <laughs> and it was... Yeah, it was. Yeah, I. It was fucking awesome. Well, okay, it's great. I mean, we all <laughs> again, life is about choices, and we all choose, you know, yeah. the path that we want to be on. Uh, so, okay, fantastic. So, all right, Michael. So, for from your viewpoint, because you do have this two sided thing about your sexuality as well, um, the wanting to be vulnerable, to be sensual, to have this romance, and then also just to be about the sex act. How, how can you kind of tell the men over 50 our age, how, what, would, what would be advice that you would say to embrace sexuality? I would just say allow for both things to exist. You know, we're human and we could have opposing, hold opposing thoughts at the same time. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Okay. And to keep that, because I do think on a basic human level, we all seek intimacy and connection. And that can't always be achieved through just the quick, you know, romp in the hay. Right. Um, so to allow for both to be there. And to leave both doors open so that any given moment, you have the option of walking through either one. Don't, don't close one and just think that that's the decision you have to make and stick with because you don't. Right. Okay. Awesome. Um, fantastic. And I, from my viewpoint, are saying to you, okay, so maybe you are a little whatever about getting into a sex act at this age with other people, taking your clothes off, what all of that stuff. And I'm like, you know, let's start kind of working on the other end then. Let's talk about the romance part. Let's, it doesn't have to be about sex. I mean, you go on dates where you don't jump in bed with the people, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's not, it's not always about the sex act. And I think that's something too that men our age because you know that's who we were as younger people or some of us were as younger people it was it was about the sex act and that's all it was that's what intimacy was that's what sexuality was but now to just embrace who we are at this age and maybe just go on dates go to dinner hold hands just like you i think those those things that you're saying is just lovely lovely thoughts that i mean even the most callous person would love to be at a dinner with someone and just reach over and touch their hand and those Absolutely. amazing sparks yeah. and you know 
or even just to be at a grocery store and see someone and just kind of like give them a little smile. That's sexuality as well, you know. Um, so yeah, all of you, I want you to embrace. But before, you know, another another thing that we do need to talk about is to, in order to have a s- healthy sexual life, not just a sex life, but we have to maintain that as we're getting older and older and older and older. <laughs> and, you know, some of the things that I think a lot of people are dismissing is that that's something that has to be nurtured as well. Like, you know, having sex is a physical thing. And as we're getting older and older, physical things are not all that easy. So, you know, we have to take care of ourselves physically and we have to take care of our, the way we present ourselves and our grooming. And, you know, there are a lot of old men out there, you know, you pass in the grocery store and you're like, dude, when was the last time you showered? When was the last time you cut your hair? When was the last, like, especially here, you like, you should not be in flip flops. <laughs> right? No, like, no. I, yeah, no, no adult over the age of 22, I'm going to give you should be in flip flops. Oh, I don't sorry. mind being in flip flops, but some people, those feet should not be seen, you know, <laughs> unless you're taking They're, care of them. Yes, okay, you know? they have eagle talons. I get what you mean. Yeah, right. it's like we need to, as we're aging, don't forget that, the physical part, too. Yeah. Uh, that's part of our sexuality is who we and, are as physical you know, beings. Part of our sexuality is tied to how we feel about ourselves physically, like you're saying, so exercise is hugely important. Exactly. Um, you know, one of the articles I was reading, it was like aerobic exercise helps. Sure with your feelings of self-worth and your relationship to your body. Right. Which in turn makes you feel better about your sexuality. Right? Yeah. All of that. You know, even um, one of the things I was reading about men our age and older, you know, taking care of ourselves, grooming, making sure we're manscaping if we need to, uh, oral health, because I'm, I would imagine, have you ever been on a date where someone like was about to kiss you and you're like... Whoa. Yeah. When was the last time you were at the dentist? Um, yeah. yeah, so all of that brings confidence to ourselves, you know? It's like, I look good, I feel good, i you know, great at this, who I am at this point in my life. Mm, all that, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you do have to feel good about yourself, I think, in order to feel good about your sexuality and in turn feel good about a, a healthy sex life. One of the first things we said was there is nothing sexier than a confident person. And if you feel good about yourself, if you're healthier and, you know, take care of yourself, of course, you're going to be more confident than if you're not, you know. Um, So, yeah, get out there and take care of yourself. Um, All right. So this has been such an important conversation for for all the men our age and older. Um, But I do want to get to my absolute favorite part of our podcast, which is called The Savage Side-Eye. This is the moment where Michael or or I get to throw a little side-eye at somebody or something or a group of people who are worthy of some shade. And I'm going to throw this out to our contemporaries who, like your friend, are giving up. Uh, my savage side, I go to you, man. Um, what are you doing? Like, come on, let's take control of who you are and not give up that sexual part of who we are. Show the younger men that they are not the only people who are sexual out there. Show the straight men our age who are sitting on their barca loungers and watching TV and their wives are complaining, you know, show them that we as human beings are still sexual in our 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So that is who gets my side eye today. It's the men who are deciding that they're not sexual anymore, that they're giving up that part of their lives. I mean, claim your sexuality, gentlemen. Claim who you are. Be proud of who you are. Yes, we are not who we were when we were 20. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the guy who was 30 or 40. I don't want to be that guy. 
a lot of work, you know? I'm comfortable being who I am, and I'm challenging all of you out there to be comfortable who you are, confident in who you are, and claim your sexuality back. So there you go. That's my side eye of the week. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So everyone out there, we would like you to uh, chime in. We have some of the most amazing listeners and watchers out there. Um, And you do. You chime in on all of our conversations and we want to hear more. How are you embracing your sexuality? How are you not embracing your sexuality? What are some of the other relationships that we should be discussing here on No Two Gays About It? And, Mr. Foley, how can people get in contact with us? Everyone out there can get a hold of us at the moniker No Two Gays About It, and that is the number two. So, no, the number two gays about it on TikTok and Facebook and YouTube. And if you go to YouTube, please like and subscribe. It definitely helps us out. And you could hit us up at gmail.com also at no two gays about it. And if you want to join our family in a different way and help support us here and keep this thing going because we love doing it and we absolutely love hearing from you, um, pop on over to Patreon. Um, and that's Patreon forward slash no two gays about it and become a part of our family in a bit of a different way and help support us. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. All right. I'm going to throw this to you, Michael. You get the last word, you sexual, sensual <laughs> being you. One last word about being a sexual human being at this over 50 age you are. I think for me, one of the most important things about my sexuality is allowing myself to feel flawed and for that to be okay because it it makes me feel better about how i go out into the world awesome you know? yeah yeah again when we were in our 20s we were all trying so hard to be so perfect how great is it to just accept who we are today and be like yeah i am flawed and that- again if you know if, if you if you approach somebody and they're like you know what sorry i'm not interested it's okay Everybody has a type. Everybody has, uh, you know, something that they're looking for. And it doesn't mean you should shut down. It means you should open up more because you just allowed yourself to be vulnerable. And that is such a huge thing as we get older. Awesome. All right. Let's all go out there and be vulnerable. Yes. Thank you very much, Michael, for kind of bringing us into your world and exposing your sexuality to us. Um, Thank thank you, you, Tom, for having the conversation. My pleasure. All right. Well, this has been great. And we are done here for the day. And until next time, Michael. Until next time. We'll see you all next week. Thanks. See ya. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to explore the various and varied relationships of those of us gay men over 50, click like and subscribe so you too can join our conversation.